So this time round, I'm going to look into how Atari ST software runs on the Vampire. Now, obviously, the Vampire is originally designed to run Amiga and Amiga software. They've been slowly improving the Atari ST side of things. So I just want to give it a try and, and, and see where we are with it right now. I kind of touched on it in my last video about the Vampire. But again, the card itself wasn't working properly. So right now, first thing I'm doing is just opening my Vampire up, taking my Amiga CF card out, and I'm going to flash a 32 gig card with the Atari OS on it. So I just got the latest version of the Atari OS and the Atari Core from the Apollo-Core.com website, just to see what it does. And now that CF card's flashed, next thing I'm going to do is use my USB blaster here. So again, when plugging this in, just make sure you plug it in exactly the same way around I've done it. So that leads kind of trailing out towards where you connect your power, not the other way around. If it's trailing over the CF card, don't switch it on because chances are you're going to destroy your board. So next thing I want to do is open up my Intel Qualtus software to reprogram the FPGA. Select the USB blaster and now just um, get my Atari core to now flash on the FPGA of the vampire. And now that's selected. Next thing I want to do is check the box to say program it and the second box there is just to verify just to make sure it's gone across OK. And you can see there my laptop connected up to it. And again, just doesn't even matter. I could have left the CF card in there. It doesn't really matter. It's, so even if the uh, vampires booted up into a particular operating system or whatever, as soon as you start flashing it, the screen will just go blank anyway. Uh, again, just for safety reasons, I don't really want to destroy the CF card and the information I've got on there right now. So I just thought I'd remove it. This takes a couple of minutes for it to uh, to flash the, the uh, Atari core onto here. But once that's done, I've got my Atari OS here that I've already put on this compact, this 32 gig compact flash. And again, I'm just being really careful here because I don't want to bend any of these pins over on the CF card. Uh, in my last video, that's what happened. I kind of pushed it because again, it's firm... And that's what makes it so awkward. You've just got to make sure you've got all them pins lined up properly to make sure you're not bending any of them over. So again, just making sure I'm in the right spot. And you can see that card goes all the way to the bottom there. So as long as it does that, we're good. Now on first boot, I tried a couple of games out. And you can see no sound and it's just flickering. And it, it just doesn't seem right. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know the development for the Amiga side of it is way ahead of the Atari side of it. However, you know, I kind of would expect something a little bit better here. So again, I'm just looking through the settings just to make sure I'm not missing something there. And here where I try Outrun. So Outrun's running a lot better than it did last time. But last time I had problems with the card and everything. But again, you see the colours off. Speed's way off. But yeah, it's just it's just not right. And again, no sound. So I thought this time what I'll do, I'll reach out to the Discord. So the uh, Apollo Vampire Discord. And they've got an Atari branch of it. And I just asked to see whether I had the right... The latest kind of um, operating system and the latest core and apologize if I've got his name or I'm saying his name wrong but Willem Dreyer, driver um, basically reached out to me and said this is the latest core and this is the latest things you need to to get it running but it's still very much in a beta stage however Straight away after putting this on there, you can see I'm getting sound, I'm getting colour, I'm getting gameplay. I'm, it's looking pretty good.
So next thing I thought I'd try is Outrun. So again, it looks correct, but it's just playing way too quick. Again, it's playable. The weird thing is, what's interesting with this, because obviously this is like now a, almost like a super-powered Atari ST, it's, it's interesting to see how it was programmed. So if you look at the time at the top, the time's counting down in normal seconds. However, I'm in low gear right now and I'm going faster than the Atari ST version of Outrun's ever gone. Like if I go into high, then it's, it's completely uncontrollable. And the other thing with this is because I'm going so fast in the low gear, obviously the counter only goes to 99. So you watch when I go through this checkpoint, what happens to the time here. As soon as I go through it, you'll see it, all of a sudden it comes up with Klingon time. So that first character, it doesn't know what to put. So it's just making up characters now. And the great thing with it is, it's probably the first time I've finished Outrun easily with trashing and everything because obviously the time is going so slow in comparison to the speed of my car. And unfortunately, you don't really get much of the end scene. That was it. That was the whole end scene. And again, Barbarian looks like, if anyone remembers, back in the 1990s, people used to get the Street Fighter 2 game and they would, uh, in the arcade, and they would hack it to make it run really fast. And that's basically what this looks like right now, Barbarian. It, it's completely unplayable. Not everything is. I mean, so this codename Iceman, for example, this is playing at the correct speed. And again, it depends on how the game's been programmed depends on whether it will work or not or whether it will play at a normal speed and not have any problems so again you've got this menu here as well this hard disk loader where you can pick games off of and I thought I'd try 1943 again Unfortunately, it's playing a little bit too fast. Um, yeah, it's just playing, yeah, it's playing a bit too quick. And the weird thing is, again, you're kind of when you fire. And I don't know whether this is an Atari ST thing or whether it's a just the way this thing is uh, running the game at the moment. But every time you fire, you can't move your your plane. It just kind of freezes for a second. So that's why, as you see, as I'm firing, I'm kind of like can't really move left or right, which is a little frustrating. Another one I thought I'd try here is Defender of the Crown. It generally runs okay, however, when it comes to the fight scenes and everything, it just runs way too quick. So if I go raid in here, for example. You can see it's uh, running way too quick and you just can't really control it properly. So I've got captured. The interesting thing with this though, I didn't realize that Jeffrey gets disheveled the worse you do. I don't think I've ever been in that scenario where he's actually been in that bad a situation before. So another thing I thought I would try is putting it in 256 color mode, 640 by 480, and this is what I got. Again, this might be down to my display. I'm just using an HDMI TV here, so that might be the problem there. But if I put it into high mode, the one thing it does do. I don't know if you saw before, everything was sort of a little bit off the screen at the top and the bottom. Now it's put it all back into the screen again, which is quite good. So again, Batman the movie plays 100% fine. I can't see any problems with it at all. So 
So as I say, certain games do play fine. However, it really is pick and mix. I would say probably at the moment, out of all them games, about 10% maybe are working, if that. And it really is a case of you've just got to go through every single game to see what works and what doesn't. And a lot of them don't. So what I've done now, I'm just going to save this desktop. So now every time it boots up, it will boot up in this view. Just tried Arkanoid and it looks like it's going to work, but it just freezes. Which is a shame because I do enjoy this game. So again, Hudson Hawk, you get the start screen and then all of a sudden you just start getting this weird pixelated mess happening. And like I say, this is, comparing in mind, they haven't really developed the SD core. They've only kind of started really doing anything with that and it's obviously way behind the Amiga side, but I'm still very impressed with what level it's able to achieve right now compared to what it was at. So we get another game where I'm just getting this. And this was Jetpack. Afterburner sort of half works. You'll get that as well with a lot of games. They'll sort of half work. So when the game starts, you'll see. You're getting the sound, but it's glitching all over the place. You can't really see any enemy fighters. It's, yeah, just, just a complete mess, really. And then you'll get something like a Slice Spy here, for example, where that will play fine. It really is a case of pick a game, see what happens. You know, and ultimately, like I keep saying, is this was designed to run... Amiga software and Amiga everything. So the fact it's doing anything ST is fantastic. So apparently how this Atari ST core started, in the beginning it was a regular Amiga core that used Emu TOS and that took care of all the specific Atari stuff. And that resulted in a basic but limited Atari compatibility. And yeah, you, it was very, very basic. And then around 2023, 2024, they started creating a specific Apollo B4 core for the Atari. Bringing the Atari hardware into the core. And with these cores, it needed a special EMU TOS fork made by Shogosh. And the combination of them two just bring a higher level of Atari compatibility. And as you can see, it's still not... I mean, I would say this is sort of alpha early beta code right now. So the other thing I discovered here, on the HD menu, if you push right, you get a preview of the... You get a game screen, basically, so you can actually see what the game looks like, which is quite handy as well. So as I'm going through them, another game I found seems to work okay is uh, Space Invaders. And you can either play classic Space Invaders or you can play it with the more updated graphics. It's not a bad conversion of it. Not brilliant, not arcade perfect by any means, but still nice enough to play. You can see there with the more kind of modern style graphics, looks very similar anyway. Red five standing by. So, Star Wars here, you can see it's playing way too fast. You can't really control it at all. And, therefore, you can't really finish the game. See, when I'm going through this, uh, through the tunnel here, I can't even move that cursor down to fire that main missile at the end. So, it will just keep running through and running through. You know, I thought I'd try some of the other applications here. So, again, it's in black and white, but this art package, for example, is working okay. I did try Cubase, and it comes up with an error, and then it starts freezing. And again, this is the other thing with this software is... So, like, for example, that Batman the movie game. Um, 
I tried it a few times and I was just getting a blank screen, blank screen. When I changed that res resolution over to high resolution, I tried it, it worked. So again, without knowing what particular quirk, a particular program, a game or an application needs to run. And again, this is probably, this will probably improve the further on it gets developed and it will get more and more compatibility. But, you know, right now, as I say, it's kind of impressive what it can do considering it's not designed to do this you know and, and as i say the fact is that ultimately this is sort of a kind of a back project for them it's not a main selling point of the vampire the main selling point is that it can run amiga related stuff at a faster speed but it will be nice if they do it so with regards to the speed of the way certain things are running as well there is a turtle program you can run as well. The trouble is, every time I run that, um, it tends to just crash the the system out. I won't even get a game to load or anything. And like here, for example, I'm going to try Tubular, and you can see it's just caused a uh, a problem. It's caused a panic, so I have to reboot again. But yeah, again this video as i said i just wanted to show people kind of at what stage the st side of of the vampire v4 is right now and like i say i'm impressed it is it's a lot better than what it used to be i mean the fact that i can actually get certain games to work and certain things to work but again it's one of them things there's probably if you just wanted to play Atari ST games or you just wanted to use Atari ST applications there's probably much better emulations to use than this right now however once this one does kind of get developed I don't see any reason why this couldn't be as good as the Amiga side for the vampire I mean the fact that you can emulate the chips you can emulate everything basically you could make this a super powered ST if needs be so that's my overview of it hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, I will see you on the next one